Hi, everybody. Welcome to part one of Slave Life on a Southern Plantation. Uh, I'm over here. I, it's backwards for me. This way. I'm over here this way. Over here. Hey. Um, so Southern life, Slave Life on a Southern Plantation. Notice, answer questions with this. It may be helpful to unattach the questions while reading and answering. Every time you see a number, prepare for a question. So see the number one here? Prepare for a question. So, in the 1800s, people advertised in the newspaper when they wanted to sell something. Here's what one advertisement from the 1820s might have looked like. So, here's a for sale sign, an advertisement. Um, so, number one comes with a question. The reading says, to be sold, cargo of 12 healthy slaves will be sold on Thursday the 15th. Men, women, and boys, including two house servants. Slave available for examination. Tobacco, cotton, and two cows also available for sale. So they're literally comparing these slaves, these humans, and their lives to tobacco, cotton, and cows. They're all being sold together. Uh, this advertisement is not similar. This advertisement is not similar to advertisements today. We don't sell people. Back in the 1800s, however, people did sell other people. During this time, some people were considered everyday items. They were enslaved individuals brought from Africa to work on southern plantations. So number two, there should be a question popping up, so be prepared for that. Many slave owners treated slaves badly because they considered slaves inferior to white people. Slave owners used fear and violence to control their slaves. As a result, slavery not only broke people's bodies, it also tried to break their spirits. First, let's take a look at a daily life of a slave on a tobacco plantation in South Carolina. So question three, be prepared. Oh, uh, this is a slave auction that we talked about earlier in the year. This picture is slaves working in a cotton plantation. This one is an overseer whipping a female slave. So over to here. In the morning, slaves worked in the fields. In the afternoon, they worked in the fields. And in the evening, they could be still working in the fields. Uh, the question number three is kind of a trick question. This was true for the vast majority of slaves who worked on a large plantation. These slaves included children as young as five or six, as well as the elderly. The workday began when it was still dark. Uh, on some plantations, only after several hours of work, the slaves had breakfast. Many more hours passed before they had supper. They had to work without breaks. If they stopped or took a rest, they were punished by someone called an overseer. The overseer was in charge of the slaves. Slaves hated and feared the overseer. He carried a whip, and he used it frequently on the backs of a slave. After 12 to 15 hours of work, the slaves could return to their cabin. Although they were tired, they still had to prepare their evening meals, tend to their children, mend their clothing, clothing etc. Many slept very little when they had to work again. Slaved, slaves worked from dawn to well after dark from Monday through Saturday. Sundays were the only days they had to rest during the week. The only holiday they were usually free of were Christmas and the 4th of July. Question four should be popping up. Many southern plantations also had a small number of skilled artisans who were slaves as well as enslaved house workers. The artisans were carpenters, blacksmiths, and craftsmen of every description. They were usually men. House workers could be male or female. Slave women did all the cooking, cleaning, washing of clothes, milking, iron polishing, sweeping, food service, and child care. Slave men tended the horses, drove the carriages, and kept the gardens. House slaves worked seven days a week. They also had to be alert at any hour of the day or night. Over here we have slaves that lived in cabins like this picture. Moving on to this one. Uh, some enslaved people lived and worked in the plantation house where they had to be available to care to the slave owner at any time of the day or night. This picture, a slave distributing food to enslaved children. Over here, like other African Americans at the time, the mother and father would live in fear of being separated from one another of their children. Last one, the white owner separating mother and child. Here's mama. Here's baby, and uh, they're being separated at an auction. Let's check with the time. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, I'm almost out. Bye, guys.